everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Bish's RV just outside of Grand Rapids, Michigan. My first chance putting my hands on this floor plan right here. And uh, I couldn't figure out how to describe the kitchen. So I, I asked my phone, I said, hey phone, how do you describe the kitchen in this one? Listen to this. This RV's kitchen space is honky tonk donk. donk. <laughs> couldn't have said it better myself. So this model right here, like at a glance, everybody and their brother builds this, where it's that around the 35 foot mark, opposing living room super slides with an island. Awesome that all the windows are really overlooking the campsite of the RV. But uh, with all those little Rockwood doing Rockwood thing touches and details, like I think you're really going to like the, the dual section day night roller shades, like the things that you find in an RV that are often like one category above, like soft clothes, kitchen drawers and whatnot, but not just in the kitchen, through the whole RV. You'll find those things in this one where they use fans, they use the bigger vent fans with the better roof covers. When you add a second air to this, it's a low profile air so it doesn't make the exterior height get out of control too fast. Auto leveling, tank heaters, torsion axle and suspension system is something that I personally feel trumps almost anything else uh, out there in this class and category right now, just for better ride and handling. Um, along with that, there's just, like they got rid of the carpet. There's no carpet in the slides. It's double Asdale now for the 23 season that they didn't have before. And just a, a host of things. Now we're looking at one with the lighter color package. You can also get it in HOA approved brown. Um, we're, we're looking at a queen bed today. You can get it with a king. It has washer dryer hookups. This is something that might be a sneaky good option for a potential full timer. It does have a couple hangups though. The road mode specifically kind of shocked me, and I'm going to take some time to close it up and show you that all the way through the RV, show you the good with the bad so you can make your best, most educated decision. And if that's the kind of thing you appreciate, hit that subscribe button and let's get started to see what she does have. Now, personally, I prefer the lighter, brighter decor that we're looking at today. Um, you know, it, it's it's brighter without just being pure farmhouse about it. I don't dislike the farmhouse stuff that you see in the RV industry. I do think it's been, it got overdone really, really hard. Like uh, one man, Jayco kind of did it, and then all of a sudden, everybody did it there. You see the big XL vent fan up in the ceiling, and that is a vaulted ceiling, by the way. Uh, one of the other things that I kind of liked about this was... All of the control they give you over the lighting zones. Now you might notice there's still a couple individual lights that are not part of the control panel. But what's awesome about this is like, look at the back there. Just some nice little small accent lights. Then you have like your kitchen pendants, then your whole ceiling cabin kind of lighting up over here. Um, not to mention the uh, the updated 2023 control panel. Frankly, I, I prefer it. it one, it's more customizable, so it's more specific to each individual floor plan. You can still Bluetooth to it, but like your Wi-Fi booster, your tank heaters, all that stuff is all built in right here. It's just, I don't know, it's just simple, easy, direct, and I like it. Now, we're going to get to that honky-tonk, redonk donk uh, kitchen counter space in just a second here. You kind of might have peaked it already in our floor plan in a flash. First thing I want to show you in this one is just the just intense amount of window coverage they have overlooking the campsite of the RV. But look how they used maximized windows even beside the hide-a-bed sleeper sofa. Usually I see manufacturers kind of just put a little window right there and not go whole hog the way that uh, they did here today. Last year they got rid of the carpet, or actually maybe the year before in their fifth wheels. Anyway, they're, they're obviously still carpetless, but that's a marine woven flooring. And if you see this, this is a floor flush, air quote, floor flush slide. It's not still technically floor flush. It's close, though. But every now and then you see a little bump in it like that. Someone's like, oh, the flooring's failed. No, no, the flooring's fine. It's 40 degrees right now. When stuff gets cold, it compresses and it starts pulling funny, basically. And that's what we're looking at right here. They also did something I really like in this kitchen. They went asymmetrical with the island. And that's a big farm sink in there. We're going to see all that opened up, all the kitchen storage in a few minutes here. But uh, it, it's interesting to me. In this RV, they're using a, a one basin giant stainless farm sink. In their, uh, a lot of their other RVs, they're still using a two basin sink. And I'd be, uh, you know, do you like one big farm sink? Do you like the double bowl? I mean, what is, you know, your preference on all these things? I'd be, be kind of curious to know. Now, if I... Uh, you know, plop down gently so as to not make you motion sick at the theater seat over here. And I'm leaning all the way back. That is just an amazingly friendly no neck wrecker entertainment center right there. And let's talk the heating system on this real quick. So, of course, you have a propane furnace. 
you see right there, you've got the uh, electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster. These have 12 volt thermostatic tank heaters for all of your holding tanks. Not to mention the, the, uh, the, the second air conditioner that you uh, add to this. Well, should you choose to add it like Mission Impossible up there in the bedroom, that actually has a heat strip on it as well. So the RV effectively has like a propane heating system and a multi-element electric heating system, which personally, I think that's pretty cool. Now we were talking counter space earlier. You got the perfect little Keurig coffee bar right over there. Again, even when the sink is in play, you still have some prep space over here on the island. And then, I'm, this is interesting to me because they kind of blended the best of both worlds. They sort of gave you the ability to have a maximum countertop like a power televator um, with a pivoting swing out TV, but with no storage behind it. They sort of blended the two concepts. And I'm kind of liking it. I, I love the fact that when it's nacho game day, bucket go boom day, I just have all the counter space in the world if I want it, if I need it. You know, if you're 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 doing something like wrapping presents in your RV or something, you need the extra counter space. I don't know. You get the idea. It's just a little bit different. And sometimes a little bit different just might work for one person where nothing else ever worked before. Sometimes it just doesn't have to be more complicated than that. Now, not only is this carpetless down here um, and upstairs, actually, you'll also not find a lot of floor heating vents in these. They do their best to kind of get rid of those. And let's start diving into some deeper details. Um, you could do a booth dinette in this or a table, by the way. I'd love to know which way you'd prefer to go. But in the meantime, take a look at that door. Now, They've been doing privacy shades on the doors on these for a while, but you're about to watch those flip in the entire industry. You're about to watch them start opening from the bottom up instead of the top down. Um, that is based on a lot of consumer feedback, and I've been I got that comment for like a, like years, and suddenly it's happening, and I think that's very cool. Now that big that's like a three adult sized uh sleeper sofa which means it does have a little bit smaller side stands but there are household and usb outlets on those and i love that they're not all the way down to the floor the uh cabinetry here it's all pocket screwed lumber core you have soft closed residential drawers through the entire rv you also have a uh, very similar uh kind of like hidden hinge not exactly soft close, but kind of the same sort of thing going on with your uh, horizontally opening cabinet doors. The one thing that kind of surprised me in the 23 season, and it's it's huh, sort of funny, they didn't include this information on their update sheet. They seem to have uh, X-Nade all of the struts to hold open vertically opening cabinet doors like you see above the TV or above the microwave. And I was kind of disappointed to see that because this is a brand that always does their details so, so well. And that's a thing that they've done for, for many, many years. To see that go away, I don't know. I kind of, I personally thought it was a little bit of a mistake, but that's my two cents. It can always come back. Hopefully that's something that they do. Oh, you know what? That's my, that's my opinion is hopefully what, I mean, what would you like to see? And I think I know the answer. I do like the symmetry around that bigger 22 inch oven, by the way. Um, and those dual pop-up power towers, of course you can, you know, drop them down to get them out of the way if you really want to maximize the counter space. The thing is, when you do that, the tops of those are also wireless charge pads. So you could actually have a multitude of devices, uh, you know, operating, charging all over your RV. Because did you notice inside the armrest of that theater seat is where they put the, uh, the power outlets on that sofa. I love that so that it's not down there at the level like a thigh buster. So many manufacturers do that. Drives me nuts. <laughs> it's like a pirate with a steering wheel for a belt buckle. Arr, you drive me nuts. Now up here in the bathroom space, that vaulted ceiling you're going to see uh, in the shower provides some awesome, awesome headroom. But first, I just kind of want to look around. I'm going to I'm going to try not to make you motion sick. I want to show you, though, just around the right-hand corner, you got some switches for your lights, some GFI-protected outlets, uh, and something apparently I didn't manage to get in the camera frame is the uh, remote control for the big uh, XL fan above the toilet. And what XL fan above the toilet, you ask? Well, this XL fan above the toilet, people who didn't actually ask. There you go. Porcelain foot flush, and when you do slide the door uh, out of the way, because you might notice it's a sliding door, not a swinging door, um, so that you you know you don't have to go backwards down the steps and, and risk tripping and falling, you can... Uh, 
you know, have plenty of elbow room as needed. Now, I mentioned the headroom in the shower. I, I think it's absolutely fantastic what they're doing in here. I'm a little bit over six foot wearing shoes and a hat, by the way. And uh, if I get you in here a little bit further, you see that triple sliding door. Um, you've got a, uh, a very... Apparently, I bumped it and it fell down. I was going to say a very high-mounted shower head, but I think you're about to see it dangling down. Yep, there it is. Anyway... Uh, and the shower miser system shot myself right in the foot right there like a uh, like an unskilled gun instructor shot myself right in the foot and the little corner seat there so Uncle Gary can shave his shins moving forward. One of the things that I also like about these, you know, he said, OK, so we have the smart control center. You don't have to, like, get up and down out of bed. There's still just a light switch in here. You don't have to Bluetooth to it. It just gives you the option of doing that. And speaking of options, that was an unintentionally awesome segue. We're looking at the 60 by 80 True Queen bed standard here. But if you notice, there's a little bit of space inside that bed. You can option this into a 70 by 80 King. Now, what's really cool is you maintain the miniature side stands with household outlets, even when you upgrade to the King. And that is an exceptionally rare quality. What is equally exceptionally rare is the fact that this RV has a factory standard inverter on it. Um, it will feed, I think, seven or eight outlets-ish in this RV, including both of those bedside outlets. And what's awesome about that is, like, if you're making a long trip in a fifth wheel like this and you need to just pop the bed slide open and, and make it through the night or something like that, you can make that happen potentially even as a, a, a CPAP user or somebody who just like wants to run a fan, you know. Uh, again, 50 amp service standard, second air optional, but again, it's low profile and has that heat strip, which is great. We're going to talk more about the low profile aspect of that when we uh, hop outside and kind of take a quick walk on the upstairs section of this thing. In the meantime, let's look at the bedroom storage. You see below the bed, it's not full storage, but it does lift and there's a chunk in there. And then they have a very interesting left-right kind of side of the, uh, the closet here. And they've done that because if you look at the shape of this nose cap, it is not possible to put a stackable washer and dryer in here. But if you're paying attention to that footage, you saw some power outlets buried inside the shoe shelves. If you remove those shelves, you could do a combo or a side-by-side -side washer and dryer in this which I think is uh, an awesome, awesome touch. Now, you've got three drawers here. And anybody who knows anything about anything knows that there's three drawers for a reason. You got one for Crocs, one for socks, and one for undies. Crocs, socks, and undies, baby. That's all you need when you go camping. Um, well, I suppose that would be all you need when you go camping at the <coughs> Naturalist Resort. Now, closing up the slide here, uh, with the door opening in toward the hallway, getting into the bedroom, not a question for traveling access. Trying to give you something a little bit more than skin deep, though. Looking under the bed slide, I don't see any sort of, like, roller wheel or caster support right there. What that means is that when the bed slide is closed like that, you most likely probably should not be occupying it. And the reason I'm using very vague terms like that is because there's no manufacturer of slides or RVs that is currently testing for slide closed function in the towable RV market, really, to my knowledge. So the best I can tell you is don't do it because no one's really going to guarantee it. But here's the thing. They, uh, they really didn't account for the traveling access in the kitchen on this one. As you see, that fridge overlaps hard with that island. And I wish that wasn't the case. But I do hope you appreciate that we still, even knowing it's bad news, close the slides up and show you around and try to give you all that extra detail information. Man. So this building right over here, that's not our building. This uh, facility, the, the grounds kind of wrap around right behind this local uh, barbecue place. And oh my gosh, the smell coming out of this thing. You're killing me, Smalls. So taking a second look at the weights and measures here, asking the question, what is it going to take to tow this bad boy around? Uh, I, I don't think half tons need apply to this one. I think the hitch weight of this is immediately going to blow half tons out of the water. I think that we're solid three-quarter ton and upcountry here. The question then becomes, do I have to go diesel? Um, 
Not necessarily. There are some really big, really capable gassers out there. Actually, some good friends of mine uh, at RV Miles, Jason and Abby, they haul a fifth wheel much bigger than this on a, a big gas motor, and they do just fine. You know, uh, the uh, diesel's uh, kind of funny in the three-quarter ton segment. Sometimes, because they weigh so much more, they actually have less payload capacity, so that can be an issue. And if you don't know what all that means, contact our team. We can help you understand the difference between like towing and payload and how all that corresponds uh, into this for you. Now, uh, you do have a radiant barrier that goes all the way down that nose and uh, under the belly. The underbelly of this does have 12 volt holding tank heaters that are thermostatic. And what that means is they'll they'll check the temperature and they'll kick on if they need to and they'll turn off if they don't although you could always just go flickety flick with the switch and shut them right down now you might have noticed uh slam latch baggage doors on anything that's like a storage compartment and this has the most wide open unobstructed pass through and again you see some really nice details in here that you're going to kind of you like a lot of rvs they will really make the front and the campsite of the RV very detailed. And then when you start getting to the back and the, the poop side of the RV, not so much, you won't see that here. It'll be pretty intense all the way through. Like you see the uh, that little pink <laughs> cylinder, that's not Kool-Aid, that is the uh, antifreeze. We put this one to sleep and hibernate for the season. You also see the factory standard inverter over there. And this is actually, if you notice, a forced air heated compartment. And did you also notice zero like carpeting felt material so if you have like something damp that you uh you put on here it's you know you obviously you don't want to leave it in there uh w without airing it out ever but the fact is it's not going to turn into like an old or organic like mold factory now these are the zero g stable steps those are the ones that have a strut to make uh putting them up and down easy and we do have standard goodyear tires and there's plenty of rvs doing that and that's awesome I, i'm glad they're doing that like grand design jaco uh keystone doing a good job but you might notice you don't see anything between the tires. It's because it's not leaf spring suspension. That is a torsion suspension. Now there's torsion axles, which this has, which most RVs have, and then there's torsion suspension, not the same thing. Basically, I, I personally feel like that's going to give you one of the best ride and handling experiences out there. Now, all the windows over here overlook in the campsite, so you get to check out your site and not exclusively the neighbors. But did you notice, look at the awnings. Both of them do this. When you're in the Flagstaff Classic or Rockwood Signature Series, they're a shrouded, shielded awning so that when the RV's in storage, when that awning's all rolled up, the base of the awning just gets cooked by the sun. It's gonna prevent that from happening. That typically is the most common failure place uh, for RV awnings. And they've done more than just about anybody to uh, overcome and eliminate that. Now they of course have that handy little griddle hookup station. Your gas grill quick connect is right down below here. And this right here is actually a hot cold utility shower. They managed to kind of hide that in one of those sofa side stands, which I think is very cool. They're giving us an accessory hitch and a full bumper instead of just one or the other. This is uh, an all aluminum skeleton product, including the roof up there. Give you a look at that with that uh, the ladder to get you up there. Um, the only part of this RV that's not actually laminated would be like the floor. And that's a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking. But again, still all aluminum uh, studs below that. I actually, well, joists, sorry, when they're in the floor. Studs in the wall, trusses in the roof. But you get the idea. The structural skeleton of the thing uh, all right there. But remember when I said they would continue to be detailed all the way around the RV? There's more to talk about over here on the poop side of the camper than just about anybody else I've seen making a floor plan like this. Now, behind the entertainment center, like behind the fireplace, there was just a pocket of dead air, or rather there was, until they actually decided to open it up and do something with it. And because the TV uh, doesn't stick out, because the TV was pushed back against the wall, that is not an endoscopy elephant enema storage pocket where uh, you know you have to reach all the way up in there to try to get to all the storage. Notice how the stovetop does ventilate hood, uh, er, hood heat outside with the hood. There we go. And this little door that you see, if you get the resi fridge, um, it's just uh, it's a where you can get to the shutoff valve for the ice maker, basically for winterizing. Now all of the sewer stuff comes out of one stink pickle depository right here, so you don't have to do the two stage uh, you know sewer hookup. You can see how you do have a uh, you know enclosed docking center right here. But one of the things that I really liked 
is what they did with their auto leveling controls by not burying them inside the RV, although the shade coming off that bedroom slide making it a little bit trickier. There we go. But look at this. So, RV, remember I said this could be a sneaky good option for full timers. Full timers are going to be, you know, leaving the slide out pretty much, well, mostly full time, right? Look at the bottom of that. That is not like a Darko weave. That is actually like a, uh, a plastic shield. And they're proactively using like slide repair kits on the floor, but base or uh, slide floor, but they're not repairing anything. They're proactively preventing damage because when water is going down the sidewall, when it's raining on the outside because you're full timing and that's extended, a lot of RV slides, the rain wicks in and slowly starts seeping into the subfloor under the slide out. That can't happen here because first of all, they put the little angle bracket on there to, to make sure that the water can't get directly into the side of the flooring and then start seeping in. And then they use that different underbelly skin that water can't penetrate. So water cannot eat the floor of your slides from the bottom up on this the way they can on frankly, a lot if not the vast majority of RVs. Now it's not a quick process, doesn't happen over time, but if you're looking to get your very last RV ever, this one might be built to be that one. Now it occurs to me, I've said Rockwood like through this whole video because I tend to think in Rockwood nomenclature. Uh, obviously we're looking at a Flagstaff today, a Flagstaff classic and a Rockwood signature, literally the exact same thing. But I will have two links in the video description for pricing and availability because of the way that our website works, I have to sort basically by model number to get you the actual thing you're looking for. Um, I will also leave a couple links to some other stuff that's gonna be kind of similar in floor plan because like this is a perfect floor plan, by the way. If what you're trying to do is get your, your second RV uh, the first time around and you wanna say, okay, maybe this isn't the right floor plan for you, but you wanna see what different brands bring to the table because they all build this one. This is the perfect layout to do some cross comparisons. So maybe that'll get you started even if this isn't where you end up. And kind of like that. I don't care what other videos you watch. I don't care what other dealerships you visit. I don't care where you uh, get your appetite as long as you come home for dinner. <laughs> or maybe I, I should have pointed at that right there. You get the idea. When you're ready, we're ready. Take care, stay safe, have fun and Whew, I, am, I am smelling that barbecue, everyone. <laughs>